Hi, this is Erica and welcome to another uh, of our demos. This time I'm demonstrating some of the paint techniques that I learnt while I was at a Seth Apter uh, workshop. These are the two that I'm going to show you today. We've got a distressed um, technique that uses a printing technique and then we've got this kind of drip technique that uses a um, subtractive paint method sounds posh but it just means taking the paint off so we'll start with the um, what I call a like a print technique so first of all we've got to get our base color down I'm you can either go light or go dark and then you're kind of using if you're doing a dark background your subsequent layers can be all the lights. If you're going with a light background, the subsequent layers can be the darks. So it's entirely up to you which way you go. Um, I'm gonna start, this is a new color. It's uh, from the Seth Apter um, limited edition set. Here's two of them that, that are in that set. Uh, Midnight and Man Mahogany, can't even say it, Mahogany. <laughs> And um, there's another two colours, one's called terracotta, which is uh, kind of orangey brown, and the other one is buff, which is sort of somewhere close to the nougat, but probably a, a bit greyer. So I'm going to start with midnight. I've already done some underneath, so we don't have to wait for paint to dry. But really, this is where... You just have to kind of go crazy. So no paint technique, no, no kind of skills involved. Just slap the paint on. So that's the first layer. I want to leave gaps. I don't want it um, perfectly uh, covered. There's a reason for that. You know, each of these sort of additive layers you can see the layer underneath so if you leave some of it the subsequent layers you can you can really build that build that texture and depth into it so that's the first layer so obviously i've already done one so i've got a light and i've got a dark so we'll start with the dark just put that in the paint pot so my next layer, literally, I could use any colour. I mean, we are talking about building up layer on layer. You know, we don't we don't have to um, put hundreds of layers in, but literally, you could. You know, we we could put lots of layers. So that's my that's my first layer second layer sorry so I've added sort of I've still got that background that even where um, I've covered it there's areas where you can still see some of that so that's the first layer now I will have to go and dry it because it is a little bit um, a little bit wet I've used a bit too much paint there but um, I shall be back and we'll have it dried so here it is dry like I said you can you can build extra layers on if you wish uh, but I really wanted to show you the um, monoprinting technique that uh, Seth Apter likes to use so for this I will need a spare bit of card and then whatever colour I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go with something quite opposite to what I have been using. I'm going to splash on some pink. So I've dirtied all my brushes. Make sure it's kind of clean. And slap it on. Then this is going to be the plate that I take prints from. So the nice thing is you're you're kind of working on two things at once. 
it's also a great way to dry your paint off rather than just taking the dryer to it every time you can just print it onto something so if you just press it down you can see there now we've got a print and you can see I'm going sideways as well so we're getting oh it's looking rather nice but as you can see, you're also getting um, something going off on this side. Um, you know, you can always, I really should have my art journal by me because there is definitely more colour on there. Just give a really lovely, lovely look to it. So that's our first layer. It is a little bit wet, so I'm just going to quickly dry it. Um, ideally, if you don't have too much paint on your surface, you shouldn't have any of those problems. But uh, as per usual, using too much paint again. So I should be back. Okay, there we go. It's dry. It didn't. It only took a few seconds to dry. Um, so the next colour, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. So should we go with mermaid? And I'm going to try not to put too much on. I'm a bit worried because that pink is, look, still looks very wet, but we'll give it a go. If I do it roughly, oh, splash it everywhere. That dry brush technique is really nice as well. It gives a really lovely finish. And we'll try with this one now. Oh yes, look at that. But like you see, if you go that way and then go so horizontally and vertically, the paint marks show up. So we can add a little bit more, I think. I can afford a little bit more of that. Don't go crazy. The nice thing about using a piece of card that already has lots of paint on it is the subsequent layers take a little bit longer to dry so when you're doing this printing technique it um, it's, will still show up, it'll still be printable I should say. So liking that, um, now we need another colour, let's go in with the dark one, let's go with mahogany always give them a, the paints a little shake because they can separate a bit at this point it doesn't matter so much about the paint colours mixing I think it adds an interest if there is a little bit of mix going on. So there we go. So press that into it. The nice thing is you never know what you're going to get. It's always going to look different. But always remembering to take it out to the edges as well. So. I'm not just plonking it every time smack on top of what I've already got. I'm going over the edge. It's making a bit of a mess, but I'll clear it up after. Promise. So, but this is a great way. If you wanted to dry a page off and you've got your journal handy, you can just each time keep putting it into a page. It, you still keep the paint on the page, but it just dries it off quick quicker. So it'd be a really great idea for a quick and easy way to dry something off. Dolly Mix next. Oops, lid's come off that one. So I'm sticking to the reds, not for any reason other than they were the ones that caught my eye but um, at some point I'm going to have to go with a sort of contrasty colour to make it stand out 
So this time I'm just thinking, I don't want to put too much on, and that's, I did have quite a lot of paint on there, but a little bit in the middle. So I hope you can see what a lovely technique this is. I think we've got some lovely detail going on in some of those areas. It's looking really good, really pleased with that. There was one other technique I wanted to show you. This, um, this one kind of worked out for myself. And I also liked the look you get when you use this um, non-stick sheet. Because when you brush out on a non-stick sheet, it kind of bubbles into, it kind of streaks of its own accord. Does that make sense? So it kind of separates. And also, you get to use all the paint. Can you see it kind of separates on the on the sheet? So you get a different kind of texture because it's not stick. There we go. Can you see that all sort of separating? So when you take a print from that, you get a kind of um, a lesser version of it. quite liked, oh I'm putting the paint on rather than taking it off at the moment. You can see you get a kind of more gentler, really need to dry this. Let's dry this and I'll, oh but you can see it there. I'm just going to dry this otherwise I'm take, you can see I'm putting more on than taking off. Right so I've just dried that, I'm just going to try that again. Squidge some on, probably too much. Got hair in it. A little bit of water on it just to help it separate. I'm going to try and keep the brush strokes all in one direction so I can make my own sort of crisscross effect with it but can you see that all pulling apart so it's already doing some of the work for me so then when I take a print that work is already already there it's very subtle this one but that's because I've got loads of layers already on there but you can see it's just added an extra something there we go each time you're just adding another layer. Now I don't know if you can see but if you look really deep into the the card surfaces I've still got a little bit of craft colour there, I've still got that dark midnight blue, then there's the green and then there's all, all the other colours are there. So it really adds interest to the background. I mean that could be a background but I've also seen them you using this this card to cut die cuts from and it gives a really interesting look so that's our first technique hope you enjoyed that our next technique is this kind of drip technique I, I kind of reminds me of a sponge this one but it may be the colors I've used this one needs a light color then a dark color then a light color and so I've start I've done this one already so I'll start with my light color and then I'm going to add a dark color and let me think I'll go really dark and I'll use slate for this technique you want quite a bit of paint on the surface and you have to be quick because you know the paper artsy paints dry very quickly and we want to get it before they dry that's our paint layer and now what we need to do is we want to put some blobs of water on it so I hope you could see that I was spraying into my hand and then 
splashing on. A little bit messy. Managed to get it everywhere. Right, this is where the patience comes in. I have to wait a couple of minutes before I try and dab off those paints. Because what you want is you want the outer paint to have dried, but those wet drops that you've just put onto the surface, they still need to be wet. So when you take them off, you're only taking off the drops. You're not taking off the whole layer of paint. It's a little bit of a waiting game and you have to be a little bit patient. So I'm go I think it, it was roughly about two minutes. So I'm just gonna give that a few minutes to see what's happening. You can start to see the puddles are starting to pick up the paint and they look lighter compared to the background which is drying and is getting darker. So we should be about there. Um, one thing that was shown to me uh, by Seth Apter, um, he used a, a tissue that didn't have any um, texture to it and if you can get it, I mean like a, a napkin, you know the paper napkins will probably be really good but um, this has got quite a lot of texture, I haven't got anything else at the moment but I can show you roughly the sort of look I got but um, he used a soft napkin that didn't have any texture that because when you go to take the, the layer off so put that down you can see all the water hopefully the paint yes and there we go but you can see I've picked up some texture from it hopefully I might be able to get rid of some of that yeah a dabbing does at least pick some of it up but you are getting a, a texture rather than just the dot but hopefully well, I've brought up some of the line as well but there we go no I can live with that happy with that but you can see the longer you leave it and this is where the patience comes in the longer you leave it, the better it is, as long as those dots are still wet. Obviously it won't work if the dots have dried up. But I'd, I'd say about two minutes. But I can see why you need a soft cloth rather than the one I've got that's my first layer so now I've got to just decide I'm going to go for a second layer I'm going to decide on a colour I think I might go with turquoise this is the scary thing about layers you might have something you're really happy with and you have to paint over it and that that is what it's about it's about what did he say not being precious about the layers um, you've got to be willing to let go each time and you might create something better right so I'm gonna dry it a little bit because I have got uh, the wet patch in there so I should be back so there we are we're back with our our layer this one does benefit from the layer previous layers being bone dry because you don't want to be taking everything off so once the layer is dry is permanent um, one thing I didn't point out is that I'm using opaques each time and as you know opaques obliterate what's going on underneath um, I did I did on my first attempt use an uh, translucent I wasn't meant to but I did anyway and I really like it because even though you take some of it off completely the even the layer that you've painted on you can still see some of the detail through so this is up to you but I think the first two layers are best done opaque but that top layer could be a translucent and it really does show all the detail but today I'm gonna do it properly and I'm gonna use a opaque so I'm not gonna put so much paint on this time I'll keep going too heavy 
Oh, let's have a clean brush. That would be good. Oh, pink. <laughs> So there goes our, our layer and like I said you literally you do paint over it all and you think oh no I made a mess it's all going to go wrong but you just never know what's going to happen so get ready to splatter again not such a thick layer this time so hopefully I will get a better effect so in splatter and when you do it with your hands you get a combination of like little splatters as well as the big ones I quite like that it gives you a, a better finish so again We've just got to give that a couple of minutes okay so we've given it a few minutes patience is not my best but <laughs> I hope you can see that you can see the background is dry but the dots are still wet so we'll layer on our tissue and see what happens again like I said it was so much better when I had a smooth cloth oh that's worked well So you can really see, I mean both of these techniques are very much about uh, a kind of ageing process. So I'm really loving that technique. You wouldn't think it was possible with paint because paint dries and when it dries it becomes immovable. But each time... It's almost like I've dropped that exactly in the same spot as the drop before. But you can see that now. It really looks like um, eroded metal. So I'm really pleased with that. But again, this is just a background. Then you could combine the two. I can really imagine some of these kind of scratchy lines on top of this now. And really building from that. Just have an experiment with paint and see how you get on and thanks for looking.